my garden started off, I started off a very small patch of milk, of butterfly milkweed in the center. And then I got more thought about it. I went online and I organized it so we, I've got essentially four beds around the center one. I've got the anchors, I've got my butterfly bush, I've got my joe pie weed. I, over here I've got my annuals, and annuals are my zinnias. And then on here I've got my perennials, I have my coneflowers, I have my black eyed Susans. You want the entire life cycle of, of your butterfly here and your pollinators. So you need things for not only for them to lay their eggs on, but also for plants for the butter caterpillars to eat after they have emerged. And a lot of those are called host plants, and some plants can be both host and nectar. So it's very easy. Like I said, I am not a botanist by trade, I'm a, I'm a chemist by trade. <laughs> but if you go online or talk to any nursery, you can pull up lists and lists and lists of flowers and they'll have nectar, they'll have host plants and majority of them are easy to find at local gardening stores or they even the big box stores. Well one host plant I have right here is just a common milkweed. It's not blooming just yet but you can tell and this is the only host plant for monarchs and you can tell it's a milkweed. See the little milky sap it produces? But this is the only plant that monarchs will lay their eggs on in their caterpillars. So that's one of the reasons why monarchs are in such trouble is because of the lack of milkweed. And the milkweed is being destroyed, a lot of it, just through development and just through um, habitat destruction and also uh, Roundup. You get to see butterflies, you get to see birds. I, I was, the other morning, I saw two goldfinches. Goldfinches love, love, love the seed heads of the coneflowers over there. Now, a lot of them are very easy to grow, especially the, the natives. I mean, really, I'm, I'm encouraging the natives because they are just, they've, been, they've evolved to grow in this area. They, they're used to our hot, humid, dry summers. They're used to our monsoons, Aprils and Mays, where we get a lot of rain. And they're relatively somewhat critter resistant. But like I said, stick with the natives. You will, you'll just have such much better luck. And the perennials, they come back every year. So you put in a little bit of money initially, but they come back every year and then they multiply and you can you know, uh, separate them and you can repopulate bare areas of your garden for a very low cost or no cost.